Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Expendable 3 movie stops. There is the beginning where Mel is fleeing and he, you know, he presses a button and this giant grenade falls from his helicopter to blow them up. I like to think that he was just trying to activate the radio or something. That's one of the things that we really, that's what we want to see more of, this big, over-the-top, giant freaking grenade coming from this helicopter. Ridiculous. Doesn't, doesn't really make sense, but it's this kind of over-the-top, dumb, fun 80s, you know, yeah, the movie's hardly ever that big. The, the that guy at the beginning who, you know, when when Snipes is escaping, or rather just before he is escaping, when they free him and then he starts, you know, blowing up. You know, he shoots as much of the prison as he can with the thing. You know, crashes the train into the, the prison and we see that the guy you know the guy gets blown up the guy who was standing in front of a picture of himself I mean that is what bandages will get you that was a nice little ah I guess he's in charge you know very efficient storytelling very very nicely although I suppose he might not be the guy in charge, that might just be the employee who left. Nevertheless, Snipes wanted him dead, and he did it in. I can't believe they actually, the crews was barely in it. I love how there at the end, it's like, to Caesar, and then he's there too, because, <laughs> yeah, and it's not even, this isn't the first time the franchise has, has yeah. With, with the, oh, you thought he was dead, but yeah, at, at least Cruz, you never thought Cruz was actually a bad guy. I mean, of all the people you were going to, yeah, I, I don't get why you'd even bring in Cruz to just put him out of commission for the whole thing, and then, and of all the people, on the, I mean, I don't have a problem with Couture, but He's not as as fun and charming and likable and memorable as Cruz is. I suppose Dolph could also have been one or two. I mean, obviously Statham has something to really add to it with the, the Snipes thing. But yeah. The the bit where Kelsey Grammer is in the car and he's talking about how found something on my lungs. And, so he, and and he gets into like, oh it's just and just a little bit of money just you know for the people for, for those of my kids who don't just so they remember me well. I'm like are you breaking bad, dude? What's going on here? That that bit where where Mel comes in and the you know the, the young team are hanging there and he points out I think that one's a little slack, and the guy goes over and he pulls it, and the the young team member he was like, you know, the others are like up here, and he was down here, and then pulled, and then he goes up here. Yeah, that's pretty slack. I mean, I get it's this thing of oh, he's really intimidating. You know, look how ruthless this guy is. But yeah, I mean, that was a really horrible, you know goon of his to let it get that slack or was it just like every so often they let it get that slack just to give you know poor old Mel something to come in and, and do oh flack flack to deal with that it's, yeah I thought the whole thing with him being betrayed
portrayed by the government was a cool thing, you know, that some of compelling villains are often the ones who really, you can get behind, you can understand why they are the way they are, what, you know, why they want what they want, and this whole thing, and yeah, I mean, it's kind of cliche, you know, he believed in the system man, and then the system stopped believing in him. But it, you know, at least it's there, and Gibson, he really sells it. Now, gotta love how they, they literally almost disarm a bomb with, you know, hacking. So yeah, this is officially, I mean, they, they say it earlier, great plan if this was 1985. Yeah, it's just, you you went from, you know, throwback to the 80s to just this thing of saying, you know, oh, well, oh, this is how it is now. But, you know, I did kind of like the thing with, you know, the whole thing, you know, let me check on the weather on this thing. Now, all those times we kept cutting back to that, that one guy you know, trying to get to the top of the elevator shaft. I would have loved if just like at the end of him getting to the top of the shaft, the others had needed him to, you know, get back to the bottom or something. That would, yeah, that would have been pretty funny. I, I believe I read on Wiki before watching the movie that apparently that character is like afraid of heights. That came across at no point in the movie. course have some you know, the, the obligatory references get to the chapa I am the Hague and I lied so yeah I I really like Mel as the, the bad guy in this but I do think when, when you have this final battle between you know, hero and villain, Mel is not Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he's not Jean Paul Van Damme. I like Mel Gibson. I mean, you know, anti-Semitism, you know, Jesus porn movie making notwithstanding, he's a lot of fun to watch. He's a great actor. But, and this is, this is kind of the thing, whenever you make an action movie, do you want a really great actor, or do you want someone who's really, I mean, there, there are people who fit nicely down the middle, but, you know, and Snipes can, can be rather, yeah, slide good at, at you know, at least before the from what I recall, he was decent enough in the Rambo, you know, in the newest Rambo movie. Anyway, yeah, you know, do you, do you choose an actor or do you choose a fighter? And and this one, it does just suffer some from the first two being fighters. And, you know, yeah, those were really great battles. I mean, this one, they try. And, I mean, it, you know, Mel isn't, you know, not like when Philip Seymour Hoffman as the Beast was supposed to be the, you know, the intimidating final fight. Yeah, that was silly. But yeah, it just it isn't quite the same. I, I did quite like that guy with the, the scars and, and such. I don't know if he's actually like some, you know, icon the way most of these are, but yeah, he was, you know, you, you noticed him every time, you kept, you know, you knew he's going to show up and he's going to kick ass, he's, he, you know, someone's going to have to beat him down to be fierce, yeah, that was, yeah. Let's see, where's that prey bomb?
please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.